idea behind this this sort of global summit is actually is we we want people to understand we want people to understand where this market is going um i think if ever there was a if ever there was a time to be learning about what's happening it's right now um things Things a couple of years ago weren't weren't moving as fast as we expected. They weren't moving. The market um, certainly wasn't as exciting as it is today. And um, as an organizer, as as an organization within us, our our goal is really just to help people. It's just to help people learn how to do this space. We're very much an education-driven organization. We find that it's the key. It's the key really for people to have the confidence to be able to take action and to treat this space as more than uh, some sort of um, some sort of gambling gambling concept. Um, what we're going to do today is um, we've got quite a big crowd on the webinar today. Um, it will be recorded. It is being recorded. I can see that. Yep. And um, and. And what we're going to do is we're going to have um, what we call a global summit. Okay. Now the idea here is not for it to be any some any sort of lecture. The idea is that we're going to have I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven speakers. And the idea is for them not to speak for too long. <laughs> okay. So the, the great concern is me, obviously, because I can never <laughs> shut up. Um, but, but I know that some other people do, other, others do speak, speak uh, more than they should. And the idea is, is actually just to share the ideas for everyone to get a perspective of what really happens within, within this space, because next year is going to be absolutely fundamental. And, and what we've learned is that this is an area where people respond to it in a very different way. And so it's, it's all very well listening to a Catherine who you're gonna hear or, or to myself or to Squared or, or, or Andy Tran or, or any of the, any of the, um, the people that, that we have within the Daxi world. What we're actually looking for is, is for, for people to connect to the message that people have been saying, okay? And we do have a uh, uh, quite a number of people who are new um, that aren't even part of the Daxi world, and uh, and you know you are most welcome. Okay, you are most welcome, and we we hope you appreciate that that we believe we've created a very unique culture, um, which is uh, very caring in its approach, um, because we understand that people do get a little bit scared of this area. Um, they get scared of putting their money into something new. Um, they are surrounded by people who don't know anything about this space, who, who are through their ignorance, think they are protecting their friends by saying, oh, you don't want to put money in that sort of thing. Um, and they really are not supporting their people very well because I, you know, I met a person last week who had told me that their friend had told them not to buy crypto in the middle of last year when he was about to do that. Um, he now doesn't like his friend very much because mm. his friend has cost him a bloody fortune. <laughs> <laughs> um, so so the, the key thing really is to just to find a message that empowers you. Do you understand what I mean? That for us, it's just a matter of, I don't, you know, it doesn't matter to me whether you listen to what I say or, or what anyone says. It's just the key thing is to find that message that inspires you, that answers those questions that you may have in your head. Does everyone get what I'm saying? Yeah. And so what I want to do is I, I, I believe I need to set up what we're going to talk about. Okay, so I'm going to go through, um, I'm going to go through about five quick slides as as I just sort of set people up because because you need to appreciate that there are whilst you may understand a lot about crypto there are people that are on this who who really know nothing about this space and they just want to start learning does everyone get it um and so and so um 
Andy there is going to um, Andy there is going to actually um, mute everyone. But we're going to give you a chance as we go through this. What we're going to do is I'm going to speak for a little bit, and then I'm going to introduce people who are going to just give their very short view of what they think will happen next next year. Okay. And I. I Yeah, yeah, okay. I get it muted. So, the uh, I, I'm pretty sure that that you, you will learn something from from someone. The idea is for this to not go on too long. We're going to go over the hour, but um, but I think we'll we'll hopefully chop it up so at least it's a lot more interesting than just listening to me for an hour. That's for certain. So um, why don't I why don't I share some slides with you first and um, and let's. Just have a look at what we are doing. Can everyone see that? Okay. Yep. Because that's the real question. All learning, all inspiration, all empowerment starts with, an, with the right question. And what will happen in crypto in 2021? That's what you really need to understand. Because if you get that, if you think of it like I do, then you will start to get exciting. And I, I they talk about a thing in... And uh, they talk about a, a thing called going all in, which is which is really, really getting committed. And that's the sort of motivation that we really hope that you will gain. OK, now, obviously, you're going to hear people talk about their opinions. They may be talking about where they where they see Bitcoin going, where they see the market going. Please understand that it's it's just their opinion. Um, and um, if, if you don't really understand these sort of things, you really need to take your own advice. So as uh, Squid said for me, um, I have, I've been in the area of being a futurist for quite a long time. Um, I, my books have sold more than 2 million copies in 20 languages. I've been in crypto since 2015, and obviously I founded and I'm the CEO of Daxi. Um, which and we've been around for more than three years, so we have a pretty good feel for what's happening. I've spent a lot of time um, studying what's what's happening, and 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 as Squid says, I'm pretty good at it. I have a natural feel for where things will go, and and the key thing is to understand that that the past, the future, is very really like the past. Do you understand that? The future is very rarely like the past. So you need to, to get an appreciation of what's what that's like. So now, um, I don't know whether you can, can everyone see that graph? Can you see that graph? Yeah? Can you see that? Look, look. the, the fact is, is that I love this graph because I think it tells the whole story. And what I like about this graph is that I created it, uh, I created it a while ago. Um, I updated it uh, last year, middle of last year. And if you have a look at 2020, there it goes 2017, 18, 19, 20. Um, you can see that my prediction at the end of 2020 looks to be around 600 odd billion dollars, which isn't bad. It got, got it pretty close actually. But the point is, is that uh, is when you have a look at the growth wave, it's, it's, it's big. Okay. And you know, when you imagine that we've had this first pioneer growth wave, which was very, very different, um, which was a very different market. When we think about what 2017 was like compared to now, how easy it is, how informed it is, how secure it is, it's a very, very different marketplace. And the, and the most important thing is all the news that's come up and, and the guys may be coming up and talking about um, certain things that are happening at the moment that are really giving them the confidence about, you know, about where this marketplace is going to go in 2021. Because that's all you need to know. I need to know what I think will happen in 2021. Got it? That's the big question that you've got to have. Now, when you think about the way currencies are structured, you need to understand there's, there's basically three areas. There's one, which is the cryptocurrencies. The other one, which is called incentive tokens, which is like a, a tokenized form of air points or shot points or, 
or city incentives. And the last one is asset tokens. And asset tokens is the is basically where you have a crypto token which represents a share or it represents a percentage of property or it represents a percentage of a high value um, art piece or, um, or a high value prestige car. Now what's happened at the moment is that there's only been a focus on that first area, that currencies. Does everyone understand that? There's only been a focus on cryptocurrencies. And the key thing with a currency is that there is nothing underneath it. There is no asset. Its value is determined by the demand. And that graph that you can see there is an actual graph of the value of the different currencies in, in, the, in the marketplace. And the blue that you can see is digital money. So these are cryptocurrencies whose job it is to be a new form of digital money, which the famous one is called Bitcoin, but there's also one that we like called Litecoin. Does everyone understand it? It's about 73% of the total value of all cryptocurrencies. The orange one is what's called a currency that's used for a blockchain. The famous one is Ethereum. The next one is called a stable coin. And a stable coin I'm going to talk about in a second because I believe that stable coins are going to change the world next year. Got that? What did I just say? I just said stable coins, I believe, will change the world next year. And currently, they're about 5% of the total market. They've gone from about $1 billion in value to $25 billion in value this year. And all they are is a digital representation of a currency. So, so one token equals one US dollar. Does everyone understand that? That's all it is, a stable coin, is simply where other coins are, are jumping up and down in value because that token represents one US dollar or one pound or one euro, it's stable and it moves with the normal price of that currencies. Does everyone understand that? Okay, and the key thing to understand that next year, I believe the focus will be on currencies, but the other ones will start to become important later on. And this is important to understand that pretty much 99% of people in this marketplace still don't have enough confidence. So they treat, they only put enough money into crypto. So it's like a lottery. And this graph here is the British government graph, which basically shows that the vast majority of people only put enough money in that they're basically having a punt. You know, whether it's a hundred pounds or 500 pounds or a couple of thousand pounds, that's, that's not really gonna change your wealth. And so that evolution is going to, is really gonna change things. Now the key, graph that I want you to look at today is this one. And it's from a very famous book called Crossing the Chasm. Chasm. And if you look at that graph there, that is a very, very famous graph which says how technology is adopted. It's a little bit, it's not a very good image. It's a little bit. So what it does is it's, this is how technology goes into the marketplace. And what it says is that ideas are, are pioneered for quite a long time. And then they become adopted. More people start to use it, but that does not mean that that technology is going to go through. Eventually it gets to a point where it needs to jump this thought process, and then eventually, this called the, the, the chasm, the, the, the chasm, you've got to jump the thought process, and if it does that, then it goes into what's called mass adoption mainstream. And we all know of lots of different sorts of technology 
which didn't jump that chasm, okay? That everyone thought was a great idea, but it never made it. You would, you may have built a whole business on the this technology because you thought it was going to change the world, but it didn't. Something else did. And what I'm telling you is that I think, or not even think, I believe, I'm sure that crypto has now jumped the chasm. And whilst one year, two years, three years ago, very, very credible people, whether they're in banks or whether they're market commentators, whether they're investors or technologists, were rubbishing crypto. Would you agree? They were all saying it was going to fail. They were all saying it was just a load of rubbish. It was just a scam. It was a pyramid. It was never going to change things. And there weren't the sort of other major organizations that that were supporting it. Well, what's happened this year is that support is there now. And because of that, we are now at a point where the market will go into this next boom. And, and what that means, this is another way of looking at it. Okay, can everyone see that? So can you see that you've got the purple, it's got the purple graph there. Can you see the purple graph? Yeah, so that's the same graph as in the previous slide. But when you look at it in pure numbers, you have the yellow, which is up to, up to 100%. Can everyone see that? Can you see that? Because I tell you what, these sort of graphs are used by the biggest strategists in the world to explain where a market is. And I'm that, that arrow is where the market is today. It's crossed, it's just jumping that chasm. It's, and now it's going into this, um, into this, the majority. It's going into mass things. The, another name for this point is tipping point. Another name is critical mass. Another name is right place, right time. <laughs> okay. This is for the vast majority of people, the perfect time to join an industry because to, if you join be, before the chasm, then you are taking a much bigger risk than doing it now. Does everyone understand that? Now you get much better rewards, but for the average person, well, for the, 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 the majority, the early majority, which is like half the potential market, okay, for them, now is the time to get involved. And now is when they will get involved. And so when we look at next year, I always, I always think of this in, in what I call the currency wars. Remember I said three different types, cryptocurrencies, incentive tokens, asset tokens. They're all using crypto technology, but one is focused on creating a currency. And there are three things that, the, the, these, are, these are the three things I want you to think about when you think of next year. The first thing, the stable coins are going to disrupt payments and remittances led by DM, which is Facebook, launched in January next year, i.e. next month. Because you will be able to send money or value around the world at the speed of an email, the whole banking system becomes bollocks. <laughs> You won't need Visa. You won't need Union, you know, um, Western Union. You won't need PayPal. You won't need travel wise, uh, you know, transfer wise. All of those potential middlemen, their opportunity dies. They may not die next year, but they'll die, they'll die in the future. So you can already see PayPal things. Now, this is also disrupts the banks. And you have already seen the government start to attack stable coins, not Bitcoin. They're attacking stable coins. All right, because they understand it destroys the banking industry and it's and it's really delivering. So that's that's going to be the, the major talk of next year. OK, I can tell you that will be the major talk. It's going to change the world and it's going to be fantastic. OK, 
The next thing is that next year I can see a boom in the, in the blue chip crypto market. And that's because the instant big financial institutions, the banks, the all those organizations and the consumer giants. So, you know, everyone like you, you know, everyone from your, from your Amazons to your Raikkonens and all these sort of stuff, all these huge consumer organizations are going to promote it. It's really easy to join and there will be a boom in the number of coins, but then there will be a consolidation to where the focus will just be on the winners. And I think when it comes to Bitcoin, I, I can imagine, and I talk in US dollars, okay, because I, because the world speaks in US dollars when it comes to crypto. So I reckon Bitcoin, you know, it actually could hit $100,000 US per coin, but I think it'll be quite, quite um, volatile next year. But I can imagine a couple of hundred percent growth next year. I think Ethereum will go further, okay? Because there'll be such a big talk about incentive coins and what's called DeFi and all of this, all this huge demand, potential demand for this. So I can imagine a 500% growth in Ethereum. And lastly, Litecoin, which has been the, a much quieter, quite an um, asset recently. Um, but I think, I think the story around Litecoin, because it's a much better form of payments than a Bitcoin, I think that that will, will get a real highlight. And so I can imagine that growing by 600%. And when you look at those different amounts, it's why we as a company always talk about buying a, a bundle of them. Does everyone understand? And that's why we talk about that. The last thing I want to talk about is there's, I expect to see a boom in what's called the new coin market or ICO. But I do believe the regulators will jump all over it because it'll be a, you'll see every BS scam coin hit the market. Okay, it will be crazy. You'll see so many blue coin, red coin, green coin, you name it. Everyone promising you all sorts of rubbish. And if you buy what they're saying with all these things, you are a fool because they will find it so much harder to develop now and succeed than that they did in the, in the cowboy days of 2017. The only difference is, is that area will eventually evolve into the next big wave, which is one which as a company, um, Daxi, we are, we are going to, we are focused on, on leading that wave as it evolves. So that's my story, okay? This is all I wanna talk about today. So the, the, just to summarize what, I, what I've been talking about is that we now, I believe in 2000, 2021, I believe we have now cost across the, the chasm, 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 whatever it is. Um, we, we have crossed that and we're going into mainstream adoption. I can imagine stable coins being the big talk, okay, in the marketplace. There will be a lot of sort of argy bargy between banks and governments as all these, as all these new people destroy these new opportunities, destroy their little racket that they've got on. Um, I think there'll be a, a real boom in these blue chip cryptos and also that new coins will start, well, this new coin market will, will also boom. You need to be beware of a lot of the BS that comes through there, but eventually it will become another major, major opportunity in the following years, okay? So I asked the question, what do you think of 2021? Okay, what do you think will happen in 2021? And so to, to get someone else, I, I don't actually wanna take any uh, questions. For me, what I'd like to do is to introduce you to Darren. Are you there, Darren? I am, Ed. Thank you. Oh, great. Okay. So, look, everyone, this is Darren. He's from the beautiful country of Australia. <laughs> for those of you, for those of you in uh, in the in the UK or Ireland or uh, or Vietnam or wherever you are in the world, um, look, Darren's background is pretty impressive. 
He has a, he has a highly successful uh, business sports background. Um, the reason why we, um, we, were, we wanted Darren to talk to you is because um, he got into crypto relatively early. Um, we understand he's in that first wave that we, that we talk about. Um, he got into that relatively early. Um, and now has evolved and has been involved in this space for a while. Um, he has worked and, and does work advising organizations in, in, in quite a number of countries around the world. And he does have a fantastic story, but I don't want him to tell his story. Okay? Darren, I don't want you to tell your story. I want you to share, because you live in this world like, like, like I do, right? And we spend our whole time talking about what's happening. And, and really, really 10 minutes, what we want is 10 minutes of your wisdom of what you think will happen next year. And, and please understand that I don't expect people to 100% to agree with me, okay? And people have a different view of what's important and what's not. And what I'd love is 10 minutes of your view. And, uh, and if it's possible, if the guys, if the guys have any questions, for them to for them to ask them of you. So, Darren, over to you. Actually, can you let me uh, share my screen? Is that possible? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we oh, just I, need, uh, I can't do that. Squiddy, you got that organized? I, I I can't do that. You're the main host, so you can do that from your end. Oh, okay. So, all right. So, um, who is Darren starts talking? He'll add the screen. Darren, if you. <laughs> I've started talking, but I still can't get the screen. Okay, you should be out of now. Thank you. Okay. Just start talking, Darren. Thank you. Can you guys you see that? Can you guys see that? Okay, my screen. Yeah. So I'm going to come okay, at it from a little. I'm going to come at it from a little bit of a different angle, Ed. Yep. So not only have I come from the crypto background, but I also come from the blockchain, the technology itself background. So I want to talk a bit about crypto and the technology and where I think it's going to go into 2021 as well. So I think there's lots of similarities with the technology as where I have to agree with Ed. I got involved in the crypto space about 2015, stumbled into it, got through that first wave, saw lots of different things happen, got in... Uh, Joined when crypto was about $1,200 a Bitcoin, which I bought stacks of it back then. And little did I know that the not only the crypto space, but also the technology would completely change my world. I, I want to just sort of discuss a little bit about the basics of blockchain, a little bit about the use cases, where I think the use cases are going to go with blockchain in the next year, because there's some fantastic use cases for the technology as well, not only for the coin and the financial space, but I think the use cases of the technology is fantastic, I think, Ed, for coming in at 21, 22, 23 and, and beyond. And also, I just want to back up what you were saying there. I think we've crossed the chasm in many ways, and I'll just look at it specifically from technology. If you look at your mobile phone right now, most mobile phones that are coming out are coming out with crypto wallets built into them. The new browsers that are coming out are coming out with browsers, with crypto wallets built into them. And I'll talk, talk and show a slide coming up shortly about just the technology and how much money has been spent in that blockchain space at the moment to support the crypto space moving forward in the years to come. So I just want to, because you said you've got some new people on the call here tonight who may not be familiar with the, the crypto space. So I just want to do a little bit. People look at blockchain. You look at this guy. You think we should build a blockchain. And most people have no idea even what blockchain is. So what I want to just talk about is the basics of blockchain, which really is just a distributed ledger, allows you to do a transaction between two people. So for those who are unsure, it's just like, instead of having a bank in the middle, which I'll put up here, instead of having a bank in the middle, we want to send some money, Andrew wants to send me some money. We've got to have this banker in the middle. Click. <laughs> we don't want to have the banker in the middle. So all crypto does, or, or the, the blockchain does, is allows us to be able to send some money, say some Bitcoin, some Litecoin, some Ethereum, some Ripple, whatever it may be, allows us to send it to somebody else without having that third person in the middle. That's what I love about crypto. It's decentralized. It allows us to be able to send money or send a transaction to someone without having 
the greedy middleman in the middle of the banker. So just the basics. So if you're unsure about how a blockchain really works, so Andrew's gonna send me say $100, that would be Andrew right here, say the buyer. And then Andrew's gonna send me, he basically creates a transaction to send me $100. And then using the technology, which is through crypto hashing, using distributed, distributed database, basically allows Andrew without that third person in the middle to be able to sell, send me that transaction and I receive it at the other end. It makes it nice and simple and nice and easy. Basically the buyer doesn't have to have uh, the, the banker in the middle and allows us to do a transaction without having the third person in the way. So just, just the basics. So the thing that excites me the most about not only uh, crypto, but also the blockchain is that gives us an opportunity to be able to use the technology that's been created nine or 10, 11 years ago and being able to bring it into use cases out in the market space for, for business owners to be able to use the technology. A big one is I, I see coming forth and I'm looking at some projects at the moment to be able to uh, create some blockchain projects in the real estate space. So the real estate space is it really allows you to do property sales, property management, settle and sign and settle contracts, which is fantastic. Use smart contracts to be able to, which creates trust, peace of mind for your transactions in the real estate space. I think real estate agents and people who are in management of real estate are gonna be really excited by the, the, the process of using blockchain. I see in 21, 22, 23, as this is, uh, phased in, I should say, I'm already seeing it locally here on the Gold Coast, where real estate contracts are already being processed through the, through the blockchain uh, for rental contracts and things like that. Fantastic for, for doing, uh, for you, utilizing the blockchain. Another one is supply chain management. Andrew and I've talked about this quite a bit, just the ability to be able to know where your produce comes from using Q codes, so straight from the farmer, straight through to the end produce. So you can go into your local supermarket, scan your phone and be able to utilize the blockchain to know exactly where your food is, even the health industry, agricultural, all, all that supply chain. I see that being a massive thing for, for use of the technology of blockchain into 2021, two, three, four. So massive spaces there. The one I love the most is the ability to, is, is the energy sector the ability to use the blockchain to buy and sell energy. I see this as being a massive one. Allows that trust and assurance um, to be able to buy and sell. So each member of a transaction, say you had uh, uh, solar on your roof, it allows you to be able to either send that to the grid, it allows the, the grid to work, a charging company, a consumer, and say electric car owner, they could all talk, a transaction could happen uh, approval gets done, is, which is required for the transaction, can all be done through using a blockchain and using smart contracts. And basically you mix in with the uh, transactive energy uh, and the suppliers to be able to create a, a, an immutable and um, transaction for the blockchain industry using energy. I think that's a really big one. Documents is another one, law and and banking to be able to have documents that can't be changed. Uh, documents is a big one. But I see lots of use cases into 2021 and more. Supply chain monitoring, banking obviously, which we talked about. Digital identity is a big one. Who has had their identity stolen before? I, I see this being a really big one. There's a number of companies that are bringing in digital identity to be able to um, save your sovereignty. Property right protection from books and music right through that industry. Digital voting would have been great if we had that about a month ago in America to be able to sort out what's going on over there. Obviously real estate, charities, uh, trading, pharmaceuticals, asset management is a big one, massive one. Claims in the insurance industry, another big one. And uh, medical, I, I see medical being a big one as well, just having that um, efficacy of data as we move forward. And I just see, the future adoption of blockchain to me is just the natural process moving forward. That decentralization of our data to be able to have um, that transparency of our data, to be able to, our data is immutable, you know, the security of the data, easy tracking of information, peer-to-peer -peer interaction. And probably the biggest one is having no third party interference 
And we see that a lot going on in the marketplace at the moment. And I see blockchain as a technology being able to help with that as we move forward. There's been billions of dollars invested in the market space in blockchain technology. Here's some of them, just to give you an idea. Platforms like Ed was talking about Ethereum. There's lots of different platforms out there that have been created to set up for this. Wallets that are out there. Uh, identity, there's another one that's not on there called SelfKey. I know there's a, a company in Melbourne, Australia that's just created an identity platform for the sovereignty of your data. Asset trading, exchanges, and Daxi is a perfect example of that. They're, they're part of the exchange system. Payment processes is another one that I've seen um, over the last few years. I've been watching their process coming out of Switzerland where you have the ability to pay a business with crypto and be able to receive cash back in the bank account if you're a business. So lots of payment processes are starting to come forth. Loyalty and gift cards, hardware, payment remittance, and lots of other things. There's lots going on in this space where I just see cryptos for me and, and the blockchain as a, as a whole, I just see it as the way to go in the, in the, in the coming uh, next few years ahead. So in summary for me, just to keep it quick, I just see blockchain as the future. I see there's so many use cases for it and I'm really excited about the process. There's more and more coming on board on a weekly basis. I think the blockchain future really just gives us a world of decentralization, immutable transactions. It's secure, it's trackable. You have peer-to-peer -peer interactions and we don't have any third party people interfering in our transactions, whether it be for a business use or whether it be from a, a payment provider or payment use like Bitcoin, Litecoin, Daxi coin, all the different coins that are out there. And I just think there's billions of dollars going into the market space at the moment. So if the big companies are starting to invest money into it, the technology is there with uh, not only phones, but also browsers are starting to get ready for, for that sort of movement. I just see that cryptos and blockchain for me, it's just no question it's going forth in, in 2021. I like some of Ed's predictions. I hope even there's the futurist. I think uh, I like the sound of those numbers, Ed. Uh, hopefully you're right. And I'd just like to leave you with a couple of thoughts. This is William Moger. He actually said that the blockchain cannot be described just as a revolution. It's a tsunami-like phenomenon, slowly advancing and gradually enveloping everything along its way by the force of its progression. I just think crypto 2021, watch out. And if you have any business or projects that you're looking to, that you can utilize blockchain in your business, I would say look forth at that, that possibility and using that technology into your business moving forward. So overall, I think cryptos is going forward in massive in 2021. Well, that's great. Thank you so much, Darren. Uh, I'd like to put, uh, um, Put it out to people if you have any questions i think it was um i think it was great great to get give people a, a wider understanding that uh you know crypto is not just bitcoin that's just one specific use case um ethereum as a general blockchain um is another use case um as i've always said to people when you look at this area the great challenge that people have when they don't understand the potential of the space, it's because they don't understand what's called the use case. Either the problem that's being solved or the opportunity that's created. Does everyone understand that? And I, and I just think it's, it's always the, the, the biggest issue. So do we have, I just want to have a look if there is, um, so just is is questions do we have any questions for um do we have any questions to to darren i think i think he i think he did a marvelous job of covering covering the blockchain um if you don't what i'm going to do is i'm now uh, i'm now what i'll do is i will pass over to um to uh, to catherine are you there catherine I am indeed. Hello. So for those for those of you that don't know, uh, Catherine is the managing director of of Daxi in the UK and and EU as well, and um, has got a has done a marvelous job with the crowd in the UK. Now, what she herself is uh, extremely knowledgeable and um, writes and speaks 
um, not just to the DAXI world, outside the DAXI world as, a, as an often quoted expert on the subject. So uh, she has a couple of people that, um, that are very uh, knowledgeable in this space, Dave, Dave being one of them. But before she introduces them, I'd actually like to get her um, 5P, as they would be called, not five cents, <laughs> her 5P, on where she's what she thinks well what what is the sort of key thing that you'll see happening next year all right and then what i'd like you to do is to introduce dave and the yeah so, sure ot white thanks. Yeah. thanks ed um so look um i know there's a lot of people that are non uh, uk and europe on here so um whilst ed is always keen to gloat he's got great weather and no coronavirus unfortunately that is very much not the case uh, in the uk and Europe. So very conscious that crypto is predominantly an Asian market. But we can really see a lot of adoption happening in the UK. So of course, what Darren was saying about blockchain, DAX is my third blockchain business, um, and what Ed's saying about that curve of adoption. So our regulator in the UK is taking crypto a lot more seriously. Um, we've seen the take up for crypto double in the UK population as a whole. You know, the sales revenues for Daxi have absolutely um, skyrocketed this year, which is which is amazing. And look, I don't think I could ask for more from crypto this year. You know, the PayPal announcement, the hedge funds, the asset managers across Europe are talking about crypto and particularly Bitcoin being a very sensible um, hedge against inflation. So it's estimated that already about a third of the financial institutions own crypto. So look, go back to when Darren first got involved and Squid and Ed and myself, it was pretty much individuals. You know, as people like Darren or Ed that had seen the light, heard about it and got involved. It was literally one-off guys at home coming to the table. And really crypto is a different story today. Um, you know, that real growth that we've seen this year has been motivated by that institutional investment. And I would see that carrying on next year. Um, I actually agree with Ed about the Ethereum. I've been saying for a while now, and there's quite a few UK folk on this call, I've been saying for a while now, it's my opinion that the medium term outlook for Ethereum is more exciting than the medium term outlook for Bitcoin, in, in my personal opinion. Um, and actually, I'm a little bit more excited about Bitcoin prices. I can see Bitcoin at $100,000 next year. Obviously, not overnight. I think it's a slow, a slow burn. But look, you know, crypto for us in the UK outperforms nearly everything. So if you don't know, um, the UK is about to leave the European Union. Um, our population was split literally 49-51 in making that decision. It's been a disaster. It's taken us years to try and unravel that. Um, and there was some stuff um, from Morgan Stanley in the last couple of days that said they expect our stock market to fall off a 15% cliff when what's called a no-deal Brexit. So we're trying to leave and we haven't managed to do it, basically. Um, and we're likely to have negative interest rates. So that's the first time in living memory. Um, so that's great for crypto in the UK and Europe. There is no other option. You know, let's be clear, there is nothing else out there. Our current financial system is not working. The uh, major economies all over the world are printing money and it is not a pretty picture. So look, I think I'm very positive about crypto next year. Um, I don't want to steal the thunder. I'm actually going to talk to Andy as well. I think Andy's on this call as well. Um, I'm going to steal Andy's best quote, which is crypto is like stopping a freight train. There is just no way it won't happen. We are past that tipping point. You know, everyone that can remember, one of the things that we often talk about crypto with is the, uh, the, the iPhone moment. So you remember 20 years, some people had phones, people weren't really bothered. Now everyone has a phone and it's an $800 smartphone. So look, I feel like um, crypto is just going to be a fact of life in the next 12 months. Um, already today, the world is divided into people that know about crypto and those that don't. Um, and look, your net wealth is going to be very much affected by that. So please go out and, and spread that word. Um, I might talk to Dave first. Dave McCall, are you on, my love? Could you unmute yourself? Morning and good evening, everybody. Hi, Dave. Um, so look, the reason why... Um, I wanted Dave to speak is I think Dave is probably quite a classic example of a UK customer. So Dave, would you mind just talking about, and also he's very famous from being on Life Without Limits on our, our website. <laughs> would you mind just talking to me about what made you do crypto this year and not before? 
Um, and then I'll ask you where you think it's going uh, in the future, yeah. Patsy. Um, two words, you, you and Laurie. All right. You introduced me to, or reintroduced me to the opportunity. Um, I've got a friend who, who uh, used to be a derivatives trader and years ago, he offered me um, some Bitcoin. I think it was about 20 for 50 odd quid or something like that. Um, I declined it. Uh, there was various reasons why. Um, I didn't think it was real. I thought it was one of these scams, et cetera, et cetera. And when I saw Catherine had moved over to Daxi, I was curious. I'm, I'm a nosy bugger by my nature anyway. And uh, I got in touch with her. We had a phone call chat. You know, we've known each other for about 15 or so years. And that was the believability that I needed to start looking into it. So I read up about it. I had a conversation with Laurie. And 10 minutes later, I bought the first pack of, of many that I've done. And I can talk to anyone. I don't have any airs or graces about um, stature, wealth, et cetera, et cetera. I've been lucky to work with some very famous people and some not so famous people. So that gave me a good grounding to be able to talk. Um, I mean, if Ed thinks he can talk, I could probably sort of match him and some, but uh, there we are. So I like telling people the story and I just think it's a no brainer. I, I like, I'm fascinated with the, the, the sort of enigma of, uh, of cryptocurrency prior to getting really involved in it. Now that I understand it a lot, a lot deeper, I, I, you know, there's so many plus points. Darren summed up everything. You know, I, I'm ashamed to admit I've never heard of Darren before, so I Googled him whilst he was uh, doing his pitch as such, but uh, I was also listening. And it's, it's the security, uh, the speed, you know, it's, it's cheap and easy to use and so forth. And certainly with what we're doing, it's, it's a wealth building platform and it's, it's a, it's a no brainer. Now, can I just interrupt you for those who are not yes. necessarily uh, sitting in our manky British pounds that are underperforming. So just to recap, you were offered Bitcoin, whole Bitcoins for about $30, probably about $30 at the time. Uh, it, it, was, it was probably about $60, $60 at the time. I would okay, say $60. That. Um, and you said, no, thanks. Um, I did. Obviously, there, you know, not, not nudging $20,000 now. Yeah. So look, so what do you think, what can you see coming down the pipeline for next year? I know you've touched on some of those themes, but would you just talk around what you think 2021 holds for, for crypto? Oh, it's, it's got loads of opportunity. You know, if, if, we're, if we're still in this lockdown into the new year, which I think we will be, people are going to have to look at other opportunities. Um, you know, Darren, Darren was, was talking quite eloquently about the, you know, the, the use of blockchain and all the rest of it. Um, my background is supply and housing um, companies in the UK with um, insurance, uh, funding, et cetera, et cetera. This can replace all that in, in in, in some in some respects and uh I, I know for a fact that the biggest uh, house builders and some of them are the biggest house builders in europe that are based in the uk are looking at this blockchain technology more closely uh the motor industry as well that's going to come in leaps and bounds i mean again this may be common knowledge bmw absolutely endorse the use of bitcoin so once one starts the train running toyota are going through their uh, processes of getting that on on, on force that's the publicity drive that everybody needs because there are two big ticket things that we buy a car or a house or both and if yeah. if the public starts seeing that they'll go well that's easy enough to do that that makes sense and that will sort of compute with them and i think that's that's where we're going to be going into next year at some point okay and look i feel like um, the banks, I always make the um, analogy that the banks are really naughty. They'll go, yeah, no, no, crypto is rubbish, don't do it. But yet a third of them have bought it. And yet yeah. throughout the year, you've just had a few just putting their head above the parapet and saying, yeah, we think it's OK. And look, 1% of cash moving to Bitcoin, you know, would have a 20x effect on its price, which is yeah. which is fantastic. Another analogy I quite like is that um, it's a bit like watching men dance at a wedding. So we know how many drinks. Us girls, we're always first on the dance floor. Whereas you boys, you need so much alcohol in you. And it takes one man, one man. You're all nodding. So I know it's true. And I've seen Dave drunk. You know, it gets <laughs> one man to have enough beer in him to get on the dance floor. And then the rest just follow. And all of a sudden, you've got 100 people. So look, price-wise, what are you targeting, do you think, Dave? Obviously, you've bought quite a lot. I won't say how much, because that's your, your privacy. Um, you've made some good money this year on crypto. What are you kind of targeting for, for next year in terms of prices, do you think? 
What in terms of uh, how I think it's going to get valued, or in terms of the, yeah. the revenue I, I see? So, yeah. um, I don't really know. I, I I just see so many conflicting stories about what Bitcoin's going to be. Ed, Ed says sixty thousand. You say a hundred thousand. There's some people out there seeing three hundred thousand. Yeah, sure. Who cares? So long as it goes up, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter what that end game is as such. Yeah. Um, and look, for us so I don't really UK, have a view in it. Yeah, sure. Look, for us in the UK, you need to feel sorry for us. This call is predominantly people sitting in APAC. If you have cash in a bank account in the UK, you're probably getting 0.1% on it. Yeah. So that is bad news for us Brits, okay? I mean, I know you Australians hate Brits, but I mean, we really are suffering right now. I've heard you use the word POM. Don't you shake your head at me, Mr. Squid. So look, crypto doesn't have to do... I don't hate you, we just feel sorry for you. <laughs> you should do. Look <laughs> at the weather we've got and the coronavirus. So look, you know, for crypto to only do what it did this year, for only another 160% to go on Bitcoin, only another 300% to go on Ethereum, uh, that makes people like Dave and I really happy. Ed, have yeah. I got a couple of minutes to talk to Andy? Is that all right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, thanks. thanks very much, Dave. Really appreciate no you, Thank you. Um, speaking. You uh, jumped on a bit last minute. Have uh, I got no Cox on this call? Could you unmute yourself, Andy, if you're on here? Yes, I'm on. I've just started video as well. There we go. Oh, thanks. So, um, look, um, I was given one speaker and I said, you've just got to have two because um, Andy and Dave are just um, great, great stories. So um, Andy, uh, I don't mind saying, has some very strong opinions about our current financial scenario. So now you've got some strong opinions about the infrastructure and how the bankers have, have let us down. And of course you have a full-time senior job in IT. So Andy is very well placed to talk about what he thinks is going on. So look, Andy, again, I'm sorry, I haven't given you a massive amount of time to prepare, but I was really keen that you, you speak today. Would you mind just giving us your your opinion of what's wrong right now? Would that would that be okay? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, we all know how fiat current banking systems um, set up. It's fractional reserve banking. It's not the gold standard. Um, this all came about when the Federal Reserve Bank was set up. Um, and simply put. We all know that they, they make a product that requires no skill. It, it's just made out of thin air money. It's um, lent um, and, the, and the price of lending it is interest and, and, and more money is made. And, and, and every so often throughout history, um, either by accident or be, by design, there's, there's, there's been a crash and, and there's an adjustment and uh, people's assets are taken uh, because they can't afford the payments. And yet the payments they're made are interest. The payments are made on something that doesn't exist. So really the biggest, well, it makes me laugh when people talk about crypto and they say, oh, well, it's a scam, it's this, it's that. No, the biggest scam is fractional reserve banking and the way the banking system operates. So, you know, we've got a debt-based system. I think the debt now for every man, woman, child and baby in the UK is, it was £30,000 UK. It's probably more than that now. It's probably near a forty. And it's only going one way. And I believe either by design or by accident, and you can take your opinion on that, the, the people that run the World Bank, the World Economic Forum, the G7 nations, that they've seen COVID, I wouldn't say as an opportunity, but I believe that the model that we're operating under is 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 going to stop they can't just keep printing money they can't just keep servicing the debt i believe that there's going to be a reboot of the financial system because it's unsustainable it it's it simply it, it's got to give and were it not for covid and the no let's not say covid let were it not for the world's government's actions and i won't go into the where's and wherefores of that but suffice to say all the governments around the world have acted in a way which has decimated economies. It will throw hundreds of millions of people into poverty, which is the biggest killer in the world. The amount of debt the UK is in, I think, is greater than the Second World War already. And I think the cost to the economy is, is, is measured in billions per day. And there is no going back to how it was economically. There just simply won't be the jobs. There won't be the money. It's, it's, it's a whole knock on effect, you know. Um, you know, 85 or 75%, certainly maybe 85% of the pubs that we had 
a year ago are not going to be around. And that, you know, to me, that, that says it all. You know, there is going to be a big change coming. And in summary, were it not for the, I'll call it a perfect storm, but it isn't. It's, it, it's, it's very, very sad what, what the government has done, not what, what the virus has done, because viruses come and go. And sadly, people die, but people die a lot of things. The actions by not only the UK government, the American government, will drive this change and i saw what was happening applied what i knew about the debt-based fractional reserve banking system in the world and looked at crypto and thought it's going to happen this is th this this is what i've been using my knowledge on how i believe the world is changing this is the opportunity and so i i did go all in i'm not a rich man i've gone all in with what i can at the moment with it without um you know, putting my put it, putting myself, uh, you know, in the street if it all fails. But I absolutely 110 percent believe in the message that Ed's giving and what's going to happen to crypto and the use cases for the various coin categories. And that's that's what I'm plugging to my friends, family, and everybody I meet. And um, yeah, I'm uh, I'm a convert. So um, you know, thank you for the uh, thank you for the introduction and uh, for having me on board. Sorry, I was muted then. So th thanks, Andy. Um, it's it's fantastic. So look, I feel like um, if you're not fully appraised of the IMF's global economic reset, which is not a conspiracy theory, it's on the IMF website. Make a note of that. Google that once this this call is over. Um, again, I want to without stealing um, Andy's best ideas. I know one of the phrases he uses a once in a generation opportunity. So particularly for an age, and I know that of course Squid does a lot of work with the superannuations. We are just working on a pension route um, for our UK and our European audience. But look, we know a lot of people who have been very let down. You know, they get to their 50s and just say the provision that should have been there, you know, isn't there. And, and crypto is my way of, of setting that right, really. So look, I think Dave and um, uh, Andy are very much out talking to friends and family. You know, all the research shows that crypto is predominantly bought on recommendation and referral, hence why we have a great referral program at Daxi. Um, to know that um, both for Dave and Andy, their partners have bought, they're out talking to friends and family. So if you're not really doing that, um, highly recommend you do so. And thanks so much for Dave and Andy taking time out of your busy working days to talk. We're in the working day in the UK. So thank you very much. Back to you, Ed. Thanks, Catherine. The last, the last thing I'd just like to ask of of you, Catherine, and um, and also I'd actually like to go back to to Andy. I'd, I'd just like, I'd just like you to to give us a little bit more scope because I, I know that through all the webinars and discussions that you have, um, you do talk about the things about where how you can imagine the market will roll out next year. What things do you think will impact the market? There'll be lots of things happening, but what are going to be the key things? In in crypto, presumably. Yeah, you know why? Why? Where do you see the market? Like like you're saying, the market's going to be strong, but what's why will it be strong? Yeah, sure. I just think it's going to be the norm. You know, I remember uh, the first time my dad bought a mobile phone home in 1995, and it was like a zombie from out of space. And for those of you that are older, he had the phone and then he had the battery in his barber pocket and he was really proud of it. And it was like the talk of the village that my dad had a mobile phone. Whereas now you're like, you know, kids that are 12 in the UK now have phones. I remember my first Blackberry, I was like, my God, it sends emails. That's so exciting, Catherine. And now that's, you know, who cares? So I feel like the big change for next year is that crypto will not be niche. It will be everywhere and it will be assumed. Like, of course, of course we have crypto. Who doesn't? And I think the banks are going to have to really change their tune. It's always been a bit like, oh, my goodness, crypto is eating our lunch. No, no, we can't talk about it. Oh, it's a scam. It's dreadful. And I think now all of those banks, you won't have a major bank in the world that does not have a serious interest in crypto. And you see the banks saying, yeah, it's a hedge against inflation. Yes, we're buying some. Yes, we've got um, a head of digital assets. Yes, we're thinking about our own coin. And I think that's just going to be a standard now. I think crypto is just going to be a fact of life. That's my opinion. And I think um, uh, Ed was keen to ask the same of you, Andy. So over to you. Yeah, um, again, with the and I hate this phrase, OK, I, I don't use it in, in my conference calls with customers and, and, and we being in IT and being in um, telecoms, we've had a lot of work um, 
turning centralized call centers into remote call centers, et cetera, so people can work from home and, and it's a virtual distributed call center. But I hate using the new abnormal because it's not, sorry, the new normal, because it's not normal, it's abnormal, but rightly or wrongly, and I'm not going into the reasons, you know, we're in a situation where uh, we've got social distancing uh, for the short, possibly medium term future and mask wearing to wear, we've got track and trace, people want to be tracked. And the amount of opportunity for tech surveillance and, you know, I'm sure we've all read 1984, I'm not going to go there, but the amount of surveillance now, I think UK has got, you've got the most surveyed or surveilled population in the world if i remember rightly there's a dense density of camera and i can't remember what what the figure is but everywhere you walk in the uk you're pretty much filmed and i think the health i, I don't think they'll make vaccines mandatory but what they will do is they'll say well if you haven't had a vaccine you can't go on a plane you can't work for a big corporation you can't go in a pub or a restaurant and you know probably morally that may be correct um i'm not going to go to that discussion but this that the tracking and the auditing and the so-called sort of health passports that, that people have mentioned um, is, is going to be big. We've got 7 billion people in the world and a, a, allegedly a very, very serious killer virus, which um, they want to stop transmission of, and they're going to use technology to, to, to do Andy, that. Andy, and I, I think that's going to be massive. I want to know where you, where you think crypto is going to go. Okay, you want to know where crypto goes? So, so, so in terms, I thought... Sorry, I was approaching that from the investment opportunities of that community coin and the investments in tech. But in terms of crypto, I think the cent in a nutshell, CBDC, central banks can use that and literally cut out the middleman. I think cash will be gone, I'll say certainly 10 years. It could be five years. But again, that will be driven by um, the... Uh, what, what what COVID's given us? Because they'll say, "Oh, well, you can't touch pound notes. It'll it'll give you um, it'll give you COVID." And I think that'll accelerate the move away from cash because it's it's expensive to move around and it's and it's dirty to handle. So um, and and the replacement will be crypto. It will be we will have you won't have digitized fit. You will, you will have a wallet on your phone. You'll have a wallet on your PC. The youngsters, the generation growing up now, my daughter's generation, they'll they'll lap it up. And 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 they won't. They probably won't remember cash. You know, by the time they're my age, they'll 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 laugh about it. That that's where I see this going. Cashless society and and the mechanism, the infrastructure behind it will be crypto. Okay, that's brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys. Um, now, what I want to do is I want to um, we we've, we've got we we had a, a guy who's who's a big time um, Bitcoin big big time crypto. OTC dealer, <laughs> but I understand he's right in the middle of doing transactions, and uh, and so what what we're going to do is we're going to skip straight on to Squid in in Australia. Squid, for those of you that don't know uh, him, has been fundamental for the development of of Daxi. Um, we have been friends for five years in the wonderful world of crypto. Um, he does about as much. Uh, lecturing and speaking and uh, recording on um, on the, in this space as I think anyone in the world, um, certainly more than I do now. And uh, yeah, and so as as I said, a lot of you have heard him before. But what I want you to do, Squid, is actually just to focus on that one question: What do you think will happen in this marketplace next year? Okay, because that is the message that I want people to actually. Think about leave this leave this presentation and be able to use to talk to people. Do you understand? Right at this moment, at this tipping point, there is now the market is twisting, um, and we're coming into Christmas. And certainly, it's a time when you meet a lot of friends and family, don't you? You ch you chat to these people, and they're going to ask the question. And what we really want people to have is some ideas and some views on what's happening. Um, we, if we can sort of 10, 15 minutes, that would be great. Squid, over to you. Well, I'm glad that you, um, you told me I've got 10 or 15 minutes because um, literally I could, one statement, crypto is gonna go nuts in 2021 and it's gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger as the time goes on. You know, um, I've been a stand up 
educator in the crypto space for five years now. I've done countless webinars, YouTubes, stand-up presentations all over Australia. Um, I love the space. The only thing that I've been saying different in the last five years is I don't say into the future. Five years ago, everything was into the future. Into the future, PayPal's going to sell Bitcoin and stuff like that. But I don't say that anymore. So the biggest change in the last three months, like that chasm that Ed was talking about, we are well and truly over that right now. The announcement by Facebook um, just on 12 months ago um, pushed the world into cryptocurrency a lot faster than they wanted to go. We've got the um, all the governments of the world are putting in their CBDC coins. They tell us they're not, but a lot of them are actively doing that now. Um, Visa, MasterCard, and the big one, PayPal, 300 million customers. A lot of people have no idea um, of what the power of having a consumer base of 300 million people are going to do to pay to the blue chip cryptos, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, and Bitcoin Cash. So those four coins are going to go nuts because of PayPal. Then you've got Grayscale, who have got a trust for the very rich and famous people that don't want to have custody of cryptocurrencies. Grayscale is one of the biggest investment trusts. They've just gone to 13 billion dollars in that trust mainly because bitcoin is 10 billion dollars of their trust you know so grayscale is a big one you've got fidelity mutual and blackrock also the biggest trust funds of the world so these are big companies that people can actually go out and have a look at and check out and have a talk about they can watch a youtube that um, i've probably done explaining a bit about this stuff as well so you talking to people the biggest thing that is people don't know what they don't know and in the crypto space our world changes on a daily basis, literally daily. Only the other day we were told about um, DBS, which is the largest investment bank in Asia, certainly the biggest bank in the southern part of Asia, owned by the Singapore government, linked up to the Singapore Stock Exchange, are bringing out their cryptocurrency exchange platform next week. That, that is just like the biggest news. Like DBS has probably got more power than all the banks in Australia. Our big four are babies compared to DBS. They have the whole Singapore government behind them. So DBS has rolled over into cryptocurrency. You've got the this equivalent happening over in Spain. Those two countries rolling into cryptocurrency are gonna force ASX, New York Stock Exchange, Hong Kong, China, Korea, France, Britain, the world will be forced to move over into cryptocurrency and tokenizing their stock exchanges. Because I can open up an exchange account on DBS as easy as anyone can, because that's the world of crypto. So like Ed said, we're over the chasm now. Now it's not about, do you believe in cryptocurrency? What it's all about is, have you heard what's happened in the last two months? Because prior to that, we were on the other side of the chasm. Now we have jumped it. People are unaware and they're going to go, holy mackerel. You mean PayPal is buying all the Bitcoin available to give to their customers and they're fighting for those customers because Grayscale is fighting for their customers. And we've got um, MicroStrategies, another very big investment company. They just fundraised $650 million and they bought this little coin called Bitcoin. So they're over um, $1 billion worth of Bitcoin and their, their trusts as well. And in Australia, we are so financially inept because we're not taught about it at school. We don't know about money too much. And I imagine the UK is not much different. A lot of our family, friends, and the people we love still think we are playing the game pre-COVID. COVID had sped up what's happening in cryptocurrency like lightning speed. And if you don't keep on track of what's happening, that's why I do my intro to cryptos a couple of times a week, because on a daily basis, the world that I see is different to yesterday. If you don't keep up to date, you're going to miss the DBS stuff. If you miss the DBS stuff, you can't tell your family and friends that now the Singapore government is highly involved with cryptocurrency. They're bringing out a, a national cryptocurrency. The biggest bank has got the, the exchange. They're going to tokenize their their stock exchange, and that's going to have a dramatic effect on investment in Australia because money is going to exit Australia over to there. 
because we don't offer the same services here. Money flows like water. It goes where it's most profitable. And now in a world of digital transactions, it'll flow really fast to where the most profit is. And the most profit in the world is cryptocurrency by far. I've spoken to many great business owners on the Gold Coast over the last couple of months, Darren being, he's one of my, a really good friend of mine now. You know, I, I met Darren at a, at a business meeting, we're good friends and I value his knowledge and experience a lot. But I've met a lot of people that just set up self managed super funds to do property. And initially we butt heads. They love me now because they don't understand that the properties that they're selling in super managed, self managed super funds is not going to double in the next 12 months like it has in the last 12 months in my world. You bought a property 12 months in Australia, it might have gone up 5% because we're having a housing boom again. It's all fake, but we won't go into that right now. But it's only gone up 5%. The same money spent in crypto has gone up over 170% this year. And now I talk to these guys and says, look, our exit strategy, which we are going to do for crypto is back into real estate in a few years time. So they start thinking, well, why would someone buy a house with a good deposit or super when they can make a lot more money in crypto over the next two to three years, then go back and buy a property with it? Who wants to short circuit owning a property? You know, I know many people who have bought, that have got property sized accounts sitting in cryptocurrency that won't buy property with it for a couple of years because they know that over the next few years, that growth is exponential. And then they can liquidate some of their coins and do whatever they think is appropriate for them. But just telling people the late, latest news, stay engaged with what's happening in the marketplace. Subscribe to some YouTube channels that you think appropriate. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to get the daily co the, the coffee chats a couple of times a week. Join into the AMAs. If you've got any questions, join in the conversation. Your world is going to be different tomorrow. You know, it took generations for things to change 200 years ago. A chip and hoe for farming was a chip and hoe for farming for a couple of generations. Then they've got a tractor. Then they've got, now we've got tractors that have got GPS, no drivers. You know, things change really quickly. So in cryptocurrency with technology, I was one of the first people to have this monster phone five years ago doing presentations. Everyone was having to go up me at presentations because I had this really big phone. Oh, that's huge. It's too small now. It's actually just enough. It just fits my pocket. That's how big it is. And you, everyone here has got the same size phone because it's not a phone anymore. It's a communication device. It's a spending device. We can use it to spend money. We can use it to make money. The world has changed. You need to keep engaged. You need to tell your family and friends that their world has changed. And if DBS is involved, Richard Saylor, um, Ron Paul, Robert Kiyosaki, Harry Dent, everyone is changing their mind about cryptocurrency and all saying you should get some cryptocurrency. Then you need to tell your family and friends that these guys have changed their mind because they were wrong. And like the tsunami's coming, the wave's coming, and if you're not on it, you're going to miss it and you'll be spending a $50,000 Bitcoin that you've paid $50,000 for because it's going to go to $50,000 and beyond. And I remember an early presentation that I did back in 2015, my, one of my first presentations, a person in the room said to me, what about when Bitcoin gets to $1,000? I remember this vividly. I said, Bitcoin is never going to get to $1,000. You are obviously from Byron Bay. You're smoking some really heavy dope because it's never going to get to a thousand bucks. So is Bitcoin going to get to a million dollars? You bet it's going to get to a million dollars. In my lifetime, probably. I don't know when, but it will because it's a decreasing supply with an increasing demand. Eventually, the price will get up there. It has to. They can't make any more. It's not like gold. They can dig more gold. They can manipulate gold. Bitcoin is only getting less and less and less as every day goes on because more people are losing it and they're making less and less and less every four years. Bitcoin, like I agree with, I agree with Catherine, 100%. Ethereum and Litecoin have more growth potential. But do I have Bitcoin? You bet I got Bitcoin.
I just think there's other assets out there that are going to go faster as well. So I don't have a blended portfolio of assets that I love having a blend. I don't put all my eggs in one basket, but all my eggs are in cryptocurrency. They're just Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, gold, silver, and platinum. And I've got a few DAT coins as well because I want to do some equity funding and loans using the DAT coin. And I want to use those coins globally. And thank you for Ed for coming up with the concept. The only reason I am with Daxi is for equity funding. I wouldn't have got involved with, with any other project out there, but equity funding using the DAC coin is why I'm so passionate about crypto. I love what we're doing with Daxi. I've been involved with the company from day one. I knew we were going in the right direction and we are in the right direction. And everyone that is on the screen, including Mr. Ed Ludbrook, is going to look back in 10 years and go, I wish I bought more crypto. Everyone will say that. I wish I paid 26,000 for a Bitcoin. I wish I paid 5.7 cents for a DAC coin. I wish. Everyone will say that. And I hope that you don't have those stories when you had a, a $10,000 sitting in the bank right now and you didn't convert it to Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, and a DAC coin through a bundle. And if you really want to make some money, then the DAC pack's the way to go. But whatever you choose to do with your money is what you want to do. But if you've got money in the bank and I don't have any money in the bank, it's all in crypto 100%. And I just took out the equity of my home. And guess what I'm buying on Friday? More crypto. Because my equity is going down. Prices are going down, but the price of crypto is going up. Okay. Make your own decisions. But thanks, Ed. Appreciate everything you've done for me and for the Daxi community. And I'll leave it back to you. Well, that's great. Thank you so much, Squid. You, uh, the from what 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 I'm getting because I I'll actually like to put um, it out to the the audience here as far as um, as far as if they have any questions. What we really as I started um, as I started this the summit was I I just want people to get ideas, ideas about how to talk about the future, to get questions, to get, to get those questions. What are those things that you are going to relate to? Are they going to be the, the personal stories of people? Is it going to be, do you need to hear about banks being involved, about uh, financial organizations being involved, consumer companies being involved? Is, is that the sort of thing that you need to inspire you to be able to talk to others about this. And, and I say the reason why I talk to, to others about this is because I feel that, um, I, you know, I feel that if you are truly excited about a product, okay, or something that you do, I, I, think, I think the ultimate level of excitement is when you tell others about it. Would you agree? Yeah? And I, I don't mean as a Daxi partner or anything like that. I just mean that I want you to understand enough about this space that you personally go, holy crap, this thing is fantastic. And I need to, I need to tell my mates about it. Okay. Now they're going to have their own reasons. You know, they're going to have different reasons of what's going to excite them about it. And, and I hope that by hearing the very different comments do you understand whether it's darren whether it's andy whether it's catherine whether it's squid um you know whether it's dave whether it's me whoever it was what i want you to appreciate is that everyone connects with this in a very different way do you understand everyone connects very differently and for you you need to find out what connects with me uh with, with me personally okay and, um, and then I want you to know that that will be different to when you're talking to your best mate, to when you're talking to your uncle Jim, when you're talking to your, you know, to your, to your, your the work colleague Sally, because she's 24 years old and your, and your granddad is 78 years old or your best mate is, whatever they are, whatever their background, they're going to have different triggers of things that are going to be, um, exciting and empowering to them does everyone understand it and that was the purpose of today okay that was the purpose of today 
okay? Uh, look, look, Martin, I'm not going to talk about that, about the, the Daxi coin today, okay? That's not what we want to talk. I, I'm, I'm sure that we can talk to you about that at, a, at another time, okay? To ensure that you understand the actual value. And, and the point that I want uh, people to understand is that when it comes to when it comes to all crypto, what's important is to understand where it's going to be used, where it's valued. Because when you understand that, when you understand the potential of Bitcoin as a digital form of gold, with the, the potential of the, the new blockchain, therefore you, you'll understand why they're talking about Ethereum having a value in hundreds of billions of dollars or Bitcoin having a value in literally in trillions of dollars because it solves a problem where, where that sort of value is expected. Does everyone understand? And when you get that and understand that, you will look at 2021 and understand why the largest financial organizations in the world, so these banks like Squid referred to um, DBS or Catherine was, and the other guys were, were, they were referring to the PayPal's to these other major organizations around the world, why they're joining now. Do you understand? By them joining now, what they're saying is that there is a massive future, which is why they're joining now. They think they're joining early. Do you all understand that? For those of us that have been in this for a while, we think, you know, come on. But the fact is, is that their professional analysts have said that this area has only just started and therefore they want their clients, their organizations, which is what their future is based on, they want their clients to be buying into this space over the coming months. Does everyone get that? Do you understand that? Because that's the last message that I would like to leave you with. I would like you to understand that the largest financial organizations have now decided that this is the space to get involved with. And as we have talked about literally over the last nearly three years, that's what we were saying. We were saying that this next second wave that I, that I drew out, that that is the key that is the wave that is not the nokia mobile phone boom it's the apple android smartphone boom it's not the myspace boom it's the facebook boom it's not the alta vista search boom it's the google boom and that's the way it works with crypto and we have now just hit that tipping point i hope you've heard it from from lots of other people and that you uh and that you feel excited about the future um, for, for me and the rest of the people, I would like to pass my special thanks to the speakers that, that came on today. Um, we really appreciate you. Uh, for everyone else to give your time, um, as, as I said, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Um, we, you know, we've, got, we've got a couple more weeks until Christmas. I hope you have a wonderful time, even those those um, poor people in the UK where you're locked in. It's not a matter of being locked in. For the, for, the, for the UK, the greatest nightmare is that they've closed the pubs. I'm surprised there's not a revolution. I'm surprised there are any politicians left because I can imagine you can take a few things away, but take, a, take someone from the UK away from their pub and you're asking for war. Um, so maybe that'll happen over the next few weeks. <laughs> Certainly if they don't open them up soon, there, there will be trouble. For us, for us, we are very proud of what where we've got to. We're proud of the fact that we're helping people appreciate what's happening. And I really look forward to, um, to working with everyone here. And especially those people that are new. As I said, there are people who are looking at this whole space today. And you know, literally today is the first time they'll they'll see, they'll see they'll see the crypto space, they'll see Daxi. So Look, it's, it's fantastic to see you. Um, please connect with us, especially over the next couple of weeks. Um, you know, as things get a little bit quieter for the Christmas New, New Year period, if you'd like to know the crypto market actually doesn't go quiet, 
because the crypto market is very much driven by Asia and they don't go on holiday now, guys. They go on holiday in February. So, so it's, a, um, it's, it's all a very exciting thing. Thank you so much to everyone. Um, we really appreciate you. And, uh, and if you have any more questions, please, 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 um, please ask, ask the questions, get them solved. We have lots of people that can help you and, uh, and rock and roll. So thank you very much, everyone. God bless. Merry Christmas and a happy new year. Merry Christmas, everyone. Just letting you know, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Got the intro Cheers, to now. Christmas. Have a great one. Cheers, guys and girls. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Ed. Guys. Thanks, everybody.